Hey there! I'm just uh, making myself some Christmas tea. So this year for Christmas, I thought I'd do something special. You know, for you guys, for all the support you've given us this year. So I looked back on my old in-depth videos and looked at which character got the most votes to be the next in-depth look. And I was surprised to see that it was Yuffie that got the most votes. I mean, when I was a kid starting to play the game, I hated Yuffie. She was annoying and obnoxious and let's not even talk about that Wu Tai thing. I forgot to let that steep. But I think it's time to give Yuffie a second chance. You know, in the spirit of the new year, give her a clean slate. Besides, I'm pretty sure that... Oh my god! Where did the presents go? Yuffie Kasaragi. Well, she's a ninja, if you couldn't already tell by the shuriken that is half as big as her entire body. She is also a thief, if you couldn't tell by the lack of materia in your inventory. She is a very interesting character though, usually obnoxious and petty in person. In reality, she is extremely helpful, optimistic, and usually goes out of her way to help people. She classifies herself as a materia hunter. Although, we don't know why she wants so much materia since she comes up with a different excuse on many different occasions. Yuffie is also one of two optional characters in Final Fantasy VII, so she doesn't have an actual final impact on the main plot and doesn't appear in any FMVs. But just as we discussed with Vincent, she plays a vital role in the universe as a whole, even more so than some of the other party members. Obtaining Yuffie as a party member includes finding her in any of various forests around the world any time after the events at the Mithril Mine. Her encounter rate starts at the forest near Junon at 32 over 256 and increases as the game progresses all the way to 128 over 256. However, there is one special spot near Rocket Town where it is nearly impossible not to fight her. Her stats as an enemy differ depending on the player's level, and in general, she is pretty easy to defeat. After the battle, the party will be in a field with Yuffie lying on the ground. At this point, if the player immediately talks to Yuffie and supplies all of the correct answers, she will join the party. The correct answers are as follows. Not interested. Petrified. Wait a second. That's right. And let's hurry. Incorrectly answering the first question causes another fight with her, but actually, as soon as you enter the menu to prepare, she flees and steals your gill. Incorrectly answering question 2 will cause her to flee and steal gill. Incorrectly answering questions 3 or 4 will cause her to flee but not steal anything. Incorrectly answering the last question will allow you to name her, but as soon as you leave the name selection screen, she'll be gone and you'll still lose gill. And trying to use the save point will also cause her to leave and steal gill. While I'm on the subject, I should mention that Yuffie has different derogatory nicknames for each member of the party depending on the party leader at the time. She calls Cloud a spiky-headed jerk, she calls Sid a bow-legged old man, and she calls Tifa boobs. Yuffie is the youngest player in the party, being only 16 during the events of Final Fantasy VII. In Final Fantasy VII, she has a white headband, a sleeveless turtleneck jumper, and tan shorts. And for some reason, the fly on the shorts is unzipped? Is there any reason for this? In other media, Yuffie is usually depicted in a lot of different ways. Sometimes she has black hair, other times it's brown, sometimes she has dark brown eyes, and other times they're purple. And in almost every installment of the series, she is wearing something different. Although, her all-important belly button is always showing. Yuffie's last name, Kisaragi, is the Japanese name for the month of February. Usually when a character's name is Japanese, it's changed when the game moves to the Western world, but Yuffie is one of the only characters to keep her name, although spelled slightly different to help with pronunciation. Yuffie was born sometime before or during the Wutai War, a war between Shinra and Wutai over placing a Mako reactor in Wutai that took place from 1992 to year 1. Yuffie's father, Godo Kasaragi, 
is the leader of Wu Tai, and Yuffie's mother is never mentioned in any of the games, but is said to be a woman named Kasumi who died from an unknown illness according to the Final Fantasy VII Ultimania Guide. At 9 years old, Yuffie meets Zack at Fort Tamblin during the events of Crisis Core, and proclaims herself Wu Tai's greatest warrior. After losing the war, Wu Tai becomes a tourist attraction. Yuffie grew up learning of Wu Tai's honorable ways, so when the town is transformed, she begins to form ideas to restore Wu Tai to its former glory. During the events of Before Crisis, and I know what you're thinking, how do the events of Crisis Core take place before the events of Before Crisis? Well, both games encompass a time span of six to seven years prior to the original game, so things that occur at the end of Before Crisis happened after the beginning of the events of Crisis Core. Make sense? Anyways, during the events of Before Crisis, Yuffie runs into the player Turk. The player Turk saves Yuffie from Avalanche, and Yuffie returns the favor by stealing the bomb detonators meant to blow up the Avalanche base and accidentally triggering them. The player Turk and Yuffie have to work together to escape, and once they meet up with Sang, Yuffie realizes that the player is with Shinra and flees. After that, Yuffie appears as the Mystery Ninja in Final Fantasy VII, and only joins the party once they convince her that they are scared of her even though they just got finished beating her to a pulp. On the Shinra ship, she disguises herself with the rest of the party, but suffers from seasickness. And once the party reaches Costa del Sol, she takes up a part-time position at a local materia shop, only so she can steal the materia overnight. During the Gold Saucer quest, if Cloud has been nice to Yuffie during the game, she decides to go on a date with him. If she does, it turns out very awkward when Yuffie gives Cloud a kiss and Cloud shows absolutely no emotion. Also, when Tifa and Barrett are captured and imprisoned in Junon, Yuffie disguises herself as a news reporter to aid in their escape. When the party heads towards Wu Tai, Yuffie deploys a trick to steal their materia. The party must chase her around Wu Tai until she is finally captured by Don Corneo. The party and the Turks work together to save her, and she returns the party's materia. Yuffie then proves her strength to her father by defeating the five-story pagoda. At the top, she fights her father. And after being defeated, Goto apologizes for losing the Wutai War, and letting Wutai become a tourist attraction. He then orders Yuffie to go with Cloud and the gang, and take their materia after their mission is over. If Cloud talks to Yuffie just before going down the ladder into the Northern Cave, she tries to make him sign a contract that says when the battle with Sephiroth is over, all of the party's materia will belong to her. Cloud says that he gets airsick when he reads while flying pointing fun at her continual motion sickness throughout the game. As mentioned before, Yuffie and Vincent don't appear in any of the final FMVs of Final Fantasy VII because they are optional characters. However, the beginning FMV of Dirge of Cerberus explains that the reason they weren't in the final FMV with the rest of the gang is because they were in Midgar, helping to evacuate the civilians and Shinra employees from Meteor Fall. Yuffie also saves Vincent as the Mako Cannon collapses from a lightning strike. After the events of Final Fantasy VII in On the Way to a Smile, the party returns to the Forgotten City to pay respects to Eris. The group then parts ways, and surprisingly the group gives most of their materia to Yuffie, but only in name. Cloud keeps the actual materia for safekeeping. In the case of Yuffie, Yuffie returns to Wu Tai with the expectation that she will be treated as a hero for helping to save the world from Sephiroth, but instead returns to Wu Tai in ruin. The aftermath of the Lifestream passing through Wu Tai during Meteor Fall is devastating, and Yuffie offers all of her healing materia to help the wounded. A while later, an epidemic spreads, and believing that Yuffie must be the carrier, Goto locks her in the family dojo to both quarantine her and protect her from the townsfolk. Yuri, a childhood friend of Yuffie's, frees her, and they both leave Wu Tai to investigate the materia caves for a materia that may help cure the disease that has now been coined Midgar disease. They fail, but while they are searching, they are chased by a black liquid that infects Yuri with Geostigma, a disease caused by the life stream sweeping the planet during Meteor Fall. Geostigma is actually an infection of Genova cells inside the body. Since parts of the life stream were tainted by Genova, anyone who came in contact with the life stream during Meteor Fall contracted the disease. Yuri then admits that he traveled to Midgar before Yuffie's arrival in Wu Tai and believes that he was the original carrier of the Midgar disease. However, in reality, the Midgar disease is really just another name for Geostigma, and Geostigma isn't contagious. 
Yuffie returns to Wutai and finds out that the town has been splitting the infected and the uninfected by building a hut at the outskirts of the town. Yuffie looks after the infected people in the hut, and two weeks later more people end up infected despite the quarantine. Two years later, Yuffie travels towards a materia cave in the north and runs into Sid and Red 13 and Coral testing a new oil-fueled airship. Sid returns to Rocket Town, and Red 13 and Yuffie continue on to the Materia Cave in the north in hopes of finding a Materia that may cure Geostigma. During the events of Advent Children, Yuffie gets motion sick again and helps Cloud and the gang fight Bahamut Sin. She also finds Cloud's Materia stash and brings it aboard the Shara. During the bonus feature, Reminiscence of Final Fantasy VII, Yuffie sends a Closed for Business sign to Barrett through the Strife Delivery Service as a way of telling Cloud to take a day off. During the events of Dirge of Cerberus, Yuffie joins the World Regenesis Organization as the head of espionage and intelligence gathering. Yuffie works to fight against Deep Ground and saves Vincent for a second time from Rosso the Crimson in the Shinra Mansion. She leads troops to the Battle of Midgar with the Shara, after suffering from motion sickness again, and joins Vincent on the assault of Deep Ground to kill Weiss. Nero stops them and sucks Yuffie into darkness, and this time it's Vincent's job to save her. She escapes and helps Vincent and the other party members destroy Omega. Yuffie has below average stats in Final Fantasy VII, but has high dexterity and the highest luck stat in the game. The majority of her weapons are long range, and range from shurikens to boomerangs to... Super Ball? and a, a paper crane? The Rising Sun is the highest attack double growth weapon in the game, and the Oritsuru is the highest attack 8 slot weapon in the game, excluding those with no growth. Yuffie's ultimate weapon, the Conformer, is probably the most interesting weapon in the game. It does damage based on the enemy's level. A higher level means more damage. But that's not all. It also does normal damage when the Morph Command is used, making it the ideal weapon for source farming. It also acts very strange when used on an ally. Instead of dealing normal damage, all damage is reduced to 1. There is no attack sound, and no damage numbers are displayed. Yuffie's first limit break, Greased Lightning, deals 3 and 1 eighths times normal damage. Clear Tranquil restores all party members' HP by half of their maximum HP. Landscaper deals three times normal damage and is earth elemental, which means it'll miss flying targets. Bloodfest attacks random enemies ten times, dealing five aids of normal damage each attack. Gauntlet deals one and three-fourths normal damage, ignores enemies' defense stats, and is always a critical hit. Doom of the Living attacks random enemies 15 times, dealing 5 eighths normal damage each attack. Yuffie's ultimate limit break, All Creation, is the strongest single attack limit in the game, dealing 8 times normal damage to all enemies. During development, Yuffie and Vincent were almost cut from the game entirely due to time constraints. This is the reason both characters became optional, but Yuffie still has many scenes and dialogue in the game due to event planner Jun Akiyama, who had a strong attachment to the character. Yuffie also went through many changes during development. Originally, Yuffie was meant to be a 25-year-old ex-soldier bounty hunter, out to kill Cloud and Sephiroth for profit, while also having a bounty on her own head. The party could find posters plastered around the world displaying Yuffie's stats, and depending on which poster was inspected last, Yuffie would have different stats and abilities when she joined the party. Instead of the Wutai War taking place, Shinra would have placed high taxes on Wutai goods causing their economy to strain. 
Instead of stealing Materia, Yuffie would have stolen the party's gill to try to fix the economy of Wutai, but the town would reject the money. Instead of Don Corneo causing trouble, a Shinra spy named Sarah would have planned to level Wutai with a bomb and build a Mako reactor in the ruins, and Cloud and the gang would have had to stop her. There was also planned to be a better backstory about Yuffie's mother. There exists a very popular cut line from the game where Yuffie says Jeez Louise at the slain Midgar Zolom, which can only be accessed by cheating because Yuffie isn't available that early in the game. One possible explanation for this text existing is that originally Yuffie was planned to be available earlier in the game. Instead of being available after the Mithril Mines, she would have been available any time after the party left Calm. Yuffie appears in many other games, including Kingdom Hearts 1 and 2. In the Kingdom Hearts series, she seems a lot more toned down, but still has a similar personality. This might be due to the fact that Yuffie wasn't supposed to be in Kingdom Hearts at all. Her role was supposed to be played by Riku of Final Fantasy X, but Yuffie was switched in due to the fact that there was already another main character in the game called Riku. One interesting note is that Yuffie's attire seems to still be Riku-esque, but with colors that fit Yuffie better. Yuffie is voiced by Yumi Kakazu in Japanese installments, and for English installments she is voiced by Christy Carlson Romano for Kingdom Hearts 1 and Advent Children, and Mae Whitman for Kingdom Hearts 2 and Dirge of Cerberus. Yuffie's theme is titled Descendant of Shinobi, and plays during any scenes involving Yuffie's story. A variation of her theme, entitled Stolen Materia, plays whenever Yuffie is being sneaky or devious. And that's it for our ninja friend Yuffie. Although before I go, I should probably mention something about the Yuffie warping glitch. The Yuffie warping glitch is a glitch that has completely blown up a lot of the preconceived notions about Final Fantasy VII. For example, for years and years after the game's release, it was proven again and again that there is absolutely no way to have Eris as a playable character after her death scene without using a game shark or cheating device. It was also thought that there was no way to access the debug room without use of a cheating device. But when the Yuffie warping glitch was discovered, all of that was completely thrown out the window since the glitch allows the player to teleport to almost any point in the game at any time in the game. This means a player could skip the Eris death scene completely, or teleport to the debug room without using anything outside of the game itself. The glitch is called the Yuffie Warping Glitch because in order to activate the glitch, a player must attempt to recruit Yuffie after suffering a game over in a non-world map battle or in the diamond weapon battle. Instead of being teleported to that grassy plain with Yuffie, the player is teleported to wherever the game over occurred due to an error with the game trying to retrieve the location of the Yuffie plane. The reason I didn't talk about this glitch in my Glitches and Oddities video, or in this video, is because I plan on making an entire video about it. Because trust me, it can get pretty crazy given the right circumstances. Well now it's time to say goodbye, but if you want to support the show, head on over to our Patreon page. You can get all sorts of exclusive videos that aren't on YouTube just for $1 a month. But even if you don't, we still appreciate all the support you've been giving us. And now, from me and Seymour, we wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Say goodbye. Say goodbye. Alright. <laughs>